Welcome to another Grit and Grand Basketball podcast. I'm your host, as always, David Sago, with Thomas Arnold. Hey. And Jose Garcia Vidal. Hi, ho. Hi. We are back to recap the last two playoff games we've had. Two? It is two, right? Was there a third one? Yeah, we were two. We were one. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just Wait. two? Yeah, it was tied, right? And, and then it was tight again it's three it's three wow it's three yeah, on there was one, one yeah. on the night we recorded there was a game on the night we recorded yeah. um yeah we're not gonna recap that game <laughs> no point. Kind of uh right. not for bias reasons uh but for mm. time reasons um and but before we start we've got some news big news listeners um, we're going to be bringing the Grit and Grind Basketball podcast to a close. Um, so after the season finishes, when the last ball's been bounced, the last shot's been taken, the last flop has been flopped, all right? The last tech has been teched, <laughs> and the confetti's fallen, and the champion's been announced. Uh, we're going to be closing our doors. Uh, we'll do a couple of uh, off-season episodes, esque off-season esque episodes, I'll mm-hmm. say, and then um, and then we'll we'll we will depart. We'll, we'll walk off into the sunset um, after what five long years? Wow, five long years, um, five good years. This this the, it was so different before. I mean, LeBron was one of the top scorers in the league. Um, KD was one of the top scorers in the league back then. Um, Steph Curry was in the finals. Uh, so much has changed. You know, so, so much. much has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. Uh, feel free to get us on social media. Um, send us some, some messages, some kind messages or, or, or some not so kind messages. Say good riddance. Um, at Shit on us, go for across it. socials, <laughs> dude. It, um, and yeah, that's that. With that said, we are going to get into our recaps. Um, so just to just to touch on game three, um, Celtics won game three, right? That was um, first game in Boston. Uh, I think they went up early. Yes, they went up early. Yeah. Uh, that was the last game that Kevon Looney started in the series. Um, they punched the Warriors in the mouth. I think the Warriors bring it back in the third quarter, as always. And then um, the Celtics are able to pull away late. Yeah, it, was, was, yeah, it wasn't a blowout game three, was it? No. It was a 116-100 win, but yeah. Um, I really do not remember that game. <laughs> it's been ages. It it feels like ages. Um, game four. Game four. Basically, the season on the line for the Warriors. Um, as I said, Kevon Looney's dropped from the starting lineup. They bring in Otto Porter Jr. to start so that they can have a scoring punch in the first quarter because they'd had two bad first quarters in a row, maybe even three. Um, and then we start to see some some some, some hoops. Um, I thought this was one of the best playoff games I've watched for, for at least a week, at least a week and a half. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, Steph, because, right? Steph. Yes, because Steph, Steph scored 43, yeah. Steph's the story. Um, yeah. But it wasn't like he... Because often when Steph scores big, he dominates one quarter, right? He'll come out in the third and have 15, 16, 17, 18. He was pretty consistent throughout each quarter in this um, in this game. I think he had something like seven or eight at the end of the first, um, hitting a couple of big threes, one where Boston called a timeout yeah. and he's... Basically circling <laughs> TD Garden, um, yelling and talking his stuff, uh, which we don't we don't always see that kind of passion from Steph. Normally, it's a bit more of a cockiness and arrogance, a 
a dance and a step. Um, but he was, it was fire, just fire in his belly to the, that, that night. Yeah, it was good to see him play like that. Um, and until that point, Draymond was still playing like shit. So uh, <laughs> not scoring because he, he was still doing something else, obviously. But yeah, no, it was, it was great to see Steph playing that well. Um, and you could already see like Wiggins starting to show uh, what he, you know, what eventually he did really well on the, on the last game that we're going to talk about in a second. But um, I think Wiggins has been such a good factor um, this entire series. Like he's, he's shown why. Like he, he, it, it took a long time, but eventually he showed why he got picked uh, number one, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, number one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah he's, yes. Yeah, double double that game. Yeah, sixteen. Yeah, sixteen rebounds, seventeen points. Seventeen points, sixteen rebounds. Yeah, absolutely madness. Madness. And of course, um, being the primary defender on Jason Tatum, that's uh, it. and that's the other side of the the story, right? Tatum. Um, had a poor game shooting the ball in game three. Um, he didn't compensate for that like he did in game one with um, double-digit assists. I think he had four. Mm. Um, and more importantly, six. a bunch of turnovers. Oh, six. Okay. Yeah. Um, but 11 rebounds. So it's very close to a triple-double. But yeah. um, um, visually, it doesn't look, didn't look um, dominating. And that's, I find that interesting, right? That I think I feel like in both of the last two games, uh, game three was the one where he got to the rim a lot, and I think the the Celtics got to the rim a lot in general. Um, in game three, Tatum, yeah, I remember having a bunch of layups. Um, but outside of that one game, I feel like uh, Tatum and the Celtics in general have struggled to score in the paint. Uh, continuing the the theme of the first two games that we spoke about last week. Um, And I don't know, to me, Tatum, as good as he is, and he is incredible, Mm -hmm. I I feel like he would be so much better as a number two. And I don't mean a number two as in like, you know, Robin to Batman. I mean like 1A, 1B, where he has, he's playing with someone like Luca. You know, like what the Celtics have. I feel like he's more Paul George than he mm. is Kawhi. Wow. And by that, which is no slight, like Paul George is borderline top 10, Tatum is as well. Um, but I feel like if he played with someone like Luca, if he played with someone like LeBron, um, where they run the offense and his role in the offense is to score, I think he, he he it would make the game so much easier for him. Um, I just uh, don't think he quite... And he could develop them, and he is developing them. He has um, shown great improvements in these areas. But um, his ISO game isn't great for, for all of the prettiness to his footwork and everything. Mm. Um, when you look at the efficiency, his actual one-on-one isolation scoring isn't on the level of the Kawhi's and the Kevin Durant's uh, or even the LeBron's um, and Luka Doncic's um, in terms of points per possession. Um, and his catch and shoot jumper is just magnificent. <laughs> like whenever he's struggling in these games, he'll find a way to get a catch and shoot jumper and it's just easy. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if he had someone creating those opportunities for him, it, the game would just be so much easier, so much easier. Yeah, but it's funny because you're kind of bringing a point that I was going to make or talk about for game four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I feel like it, 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 do, it does apply for the entire series, but and also game three, um, which I think one of the reason, reasons why the Celtics are now 3-2 down is that they're lacking an actual, I was going to say like an actual point guard in a more like mm. classic call, you know, classic yeah. sense, uh, like somebody that can just slow the game down when it needs to be slowed down. Like, a, I was going to say, like a Chris Paul, right? Like somebody that, that has a feel for setting up the team on offense and, and making sure that can read the game. So they almost, you know, you know yeah, they've got, um, they've got Smart, they've got um, Brown, and they've got Taylor that can play sort of point guard, hybrid point guard position sort mm. of thing that they bring the ball up. But, 
it feels mm-hmm. like you know all the turnovers they they're having like all these mm-hmm. bad decisions they they take on offense. I think this is where they that's what's missing for the Celtics to take yeah. the next step. That if they can bring somebody in, maybe if we still don't know who's going to win this title, but it mm. might be over on Thursday night. It might be over as well. It'll be over by Sunday. But um, if if and I know it's looking into next season, but if I were the the Celtics GM, I'll look into bringing a point guard, like a, a, a an old school point guard, almost to run that offense. And then if it's somebody that can score a bunch of points great and then help um alleviate that duty for for tatum maybe not 100 yeah. of the game but yeah i i, I kind of agree with you that's i think that's fair to say he, he could be yeah I, th- I just think i i i yeah i mean it, you make a really good point there i think so the way you see tatum is it's more of a like I, when you were talking his catch shooting great catch and shoot sorry is great um his iso one is not great <laughs> Um, so you, you kind of describing, uh, Clay Thompson there as well, you know, but Clay has that Steph next to him. Right. That, and, mm-hmm. and Clay is just a perfect compliment and he takes over games easy without dribbling. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and he could do, he could easily be another Clay. Right. Um, mm-hmm. the thing is, he's not going to be Clay ever because he's got a super max mega good. contract. Right. And he's yeah. too good. He's, he's yeah. arguably better than Clay and has more resources than Clay. Right. Oh, sure. But. Yeah. But he he could yeah I I agree like may, maybe in a few years if he doesn't get a title, uh, he can start think of taking a different role you know as so many players so many other players have done, uh, but yeah I, I don't think it's gonna happen in Boston though. Mm. Uh, right right yeah I see what you mean um, yeah yeah and like obviously who's... I'm not yeah. I'm not suggesting trades I'm just saying like as far as yeah. the game goes and the way that it's developing and things like Definitely. that. Um, I just see him in that in that way, in that sense, um, rather than as someone who should have the ball in his hands all the time. Yeah, makes sense. Um, makes sense. Yeah. And he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't. The uh, assists on Boston are always well spread out. They're well distributed. And um, their ball movement is one of the reasons why they improve so much from whenever they flip the switch. Was it January or whatever it was? Um, when they were a 500 team, um, their yeah their ball movement picked up. Derek White sort of gave them another unselfish player on offense, and that sort of helped them um, yeah. share and distribute the the ball a bit better. Uh, but their offense it, that stops a lot of the time uh, late game, uh-huh. and uh, LeBron even tweeted about it saying bad offense. It was about this game actually, game three. Uh, not bad offense, sorry. Um, bad shot selection against the Warriors equals um, skull face emoji equals death. <laughs> um, and and that's what we saw, right? They were able to squeeze them um, with their defense on the uh, on the Celtics offensive end and uh, hold them to only ninety four points. Um, was it? Not? Oh no, sorry, that's game four. Uh, hold them to only uh, 97 points in game yep. three. Um, and game four was the one where Tatum had the, the six turnovers um, to his six assists. Not a good ratio. Um, but it definitely wasn't all on him. He shot the ball well. Um but we started to see that regression to the mean for Derek White, for Grant Williams, for Al Horford, where they they weren't making the shots at the high clip that they were um, prior to, mm-hmm. prior to that. Uh, Marcus Smart as well. Um, but I feel like with Game Three, the the Warriors just really, really wanted it. They really wanted it. They were really. Um, they were aware of the stakes of the game and they played like it. Uh, and then I, I don't, although the game, the match, the game stayed close um, throughout. Uh, I never got the impression that Boston was in a dog fight. Like they, that they knew they were in a dog fight. They, yeah. they didn't seem desperate at any point. Whereas I feel like the, the Warriors played with that urgency. I don't know if it feels like the Celtics are, Almost finding out, I guess, 
um, in every game now, which is really weird. Really, really weird. Um, I don't know. Maybe the path to the finals was harder. I have no idea, but it feels like they... Uh... Game seven's in their last two series, isn't it? True. And yeah. then the, the little injuries to Robert Williams and Marcus Smart. But they do say mm. by this point in the playoffs, everyone's everyone's got True. something, right? True. Mm. What are you looking at? Stats. <laughs> um and then I feel like in these last two games, uh, Robert Williams has really emerged as super important for the Celtics. Absolutely. But the last game, he wasn't such a factor, was he? I mean, the two big men on the last game, I, I just, I, yeah, it didn't happen for them. Well, well, on the yeah. offensive end, but on the defensive end, um, yeah. Williams has been. You can tell that they feel his presence. They don't oh. just go in with reckless abandon. I think the last game a little bit more, but um, game three for sure, it was like they were hearing footsteps. They were <laughs> they were adjusting their shots. They were um, being very weary of going in against him. Mm. Well, uh, yeah, it's it's really weird because again, like uh, jumping ahead to game five, but <laughs> like Williams played thirty minutes, but still got. The, the Celtics got outscored in the paint by like 16, 4, 14, something like that, probably 16 points. So that's a problem in, in the last game. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the, saving it for last game. But um, yeah, the, the before that, defensively, he's, made, he's been making a difference, right? Like every time, uh, I think when Draymond was trying to attack the, the basket, he would just get blocked and sent back mm-hmm. home. So it's just. And he's yeah. play, he, Williams is playing injured as well. Like he's still recovering from, yeah. uh, I believe it's a shoulder injury. The shoulder, yeah. Robert Williams is yeah. the knee. Oh, it's the knee, sorry. Confusing me. Um, so, yeah, not the best way to play, but he's powering through, apparently. Mm. Um, might be your first and last opportunity to win the title. So, you play through the pain, yeah. through the pain, through the pain. No. <laughs> um, and then the other high-profile thing that happened in this game, besides Steph with the buckets and more buckets, is um, the benching of Draymond, right? But late in yeah. the... Was it late? It was maybe the seven-minute mark of the fourth quarter, something like that. Um, Draymond gets taken out and doesn't come back in until about the third minute. Um, and in that period, the... Warriors really start to um, really start to put their foot on the gas and, and are able to um, I think they turn up the defense when it gets to about the five minute mark the Celtics barely score another bucket uh, like I think they maybe have two field goals until it's like a double digit game uh, I can't remember what the first one was but the second one was definitely that um I think it was a three from someone. I can't, it might have been Jalen Brown or Tatum. And um, the last one was the Marcus Smart three, um, just where the, the wing meets the corner. Off, I think it was off an offensive rebound or a double team of Tatum. And that felt like a real gut punch, right? The, I think it put the, uh, it put the Celtics up, um, up by a little bit. And that felt like one of those shots that you look back on at the end of the game and you're like, yeah, that was the turning point where they got this big bucket. The crowd came into the game and the, the Warriors weren't able to stem it, but they call a timeout, um, come back in, and like that was their 94th point. And I think they were at four. I think it was 1994. And they literally only scored three more points the rest of the game. <laughs> um, Steph hits a, a two, a running float, a two. Um, he hits that um, size up three on Derek White. Uh, I think Clay has a shot. Um, Wiggins at, at put back Wiggins something too. like that. And I think they went on a run. Yeah, that's like the a, game. A quick run after that, but yeah, yeah, and that's the game. Like what was it seventeen to seventeen to three or something like that to end the game. 
and you don't recover from those. Um, mm -hmm. So that was that. They force a game four, and then we have um, that game last night, which was weird. Did you guys manage to watch the whole thing? There was the there was a whole thing, but I, I I watched like very um ex very extended highlights. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was so many wrong, so many things went wrong for Boston yesterday. Um, eight, 18 turnovers against yep. six. Yeah. Um, Tatum only scored five points in the last quarter, but overall, Tatum has been scoring five of 21 in the fourth quarter in the whole series. So that's just mm -hmm. really bad for a franchise player. Um, um, I was listening to Ime Yudoka's interview and I need to just summarize what happened to the Celtics all platform all the playoffs um during the, the entire playoffs it's just consistency right so they were seven and oh after they, they lost the game uh right and it's the first game they lose after losing so back to back games in this postseason yeah. but they just lack consistency so it's great that you can recover and bounce back and win after a loss but they haven't they, they struggled to win two games in a row and that's yeah. the problem isn't it so yeah. and and that's what happened so this quarter was basically this quarter so this this game was like a mini version of the playoffs they did mm -hmm. really well in the third really well against the mm -hmm. warriors that were consistently good in the third yeah and in the fourth quarter they just choked mm. so they lack consistency so i think this is this is one of the things that is it is it experience maybe fighting the like making them you know, lose that focus potentially because because I, I said it before the, the series started that the Warriors are so much more experienced. So I think it was a perfect storm for the Celtics game. They were maybe a bit cocky, thinking, "Yeah, we got this in the bag because we lost." You know, we always bounce back. They didn't. Mm. Well, there's mm. the, there's the whole discussion online about um, people saying they they may have well by they I mean uh, the big three, big Celtics three, which is Tatum, Smart, and, and Brown. They may have spent, you know, gave it all just to be on top at the end of the third quarter. So, like, by having this mm. massive third quarter when they they mm. literally played out of their mind, in their run out of gas, yeah, and then again ran out of gas in the fourth quarter, and then you saw that what Tatum what one for five in the last in the fourth Ridiculous. quarter. So, uh, yeah. but th then you can you can also argue like if you watch the highlights, the, the Wiggins defense on, on Tatum as well, mm. like he's he's. I think he shot like three or four air balls with Wiggins yeah. on him. Yeah. Air balls, like not just yeah. even like missing the shot, like and then every yeah. single shot is taken again. Like like we say every year, they if it's uh, sure. <laughs> bouncing back, mm. like sh super short short shots, that means your legs are gone usually mm -hmm. um, because you can't you can't really do much about that. So to me, it was a, a case of them being tired plus. Um, Obviously, the Warriors being a great defensive team, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. And um, it was the same for Steph, right? It was the same for him. He he, it's the first playoff game he's ever played where he didn't make a three. Yeah. Um, and he also, I think it was three records that he that ended with him that night in a win, nonetheless. But um, consecutive playoff games with a three, um consecutive playoff games making multiple threes and then what was the third consecutive one? games making making a three 132 yeah i feel like that was a okay yeah um and yeah so all of those streaks came to an end um but his shots as well similarly were all short yeah every single one of them um no air balls but yeah they were all short they were all hitting front rim um and he had some good looks. Like they they defended him well in the first um, first half, but in the second half he managed to gain some good looks, um, and just didn't knock them down. I mean, by that point you don't have any kind of rhythm from three, so um, it becomes a bit more difficult. But um, I feel like in the first half they were playing him so well that he was like, "Oh, okay, I'll just be a decoy," and I mm -hmm. thought that would sort of help him save his legs, but. Um, there was one point, I think it was in the, where was it? What side were they shooting towards? They were shooting towards the right. So it was in the first half. And um, he was, he was being guarded by Marcus Smart and he was like sort of running around. Um, he ran through the middle uh, and came down to the, the wing. 
And I was like, he's not really sprinting. Like normally when you yeah. see him and Clay coming off screens and running and all of that stuff, like it's a sprint. Like they lose mm. their man just off mm. the off the intensity of the of the run, of the cut, of whatever it is. He was just like, eh, I'm just gonna come round down here. Maybe he knew he wasn't gonna get the ball and he was just playing um as a decoy. Um I think so, yeah. But yeah, I found it interesting that he wasn't like sprinting with the same intensity. Um, and but yeah, I definitely felt in the first half that with the lead that they had, um, he was kind of like, oh well, I can just facilitate and be a be a distraction off the ball because really yeah. the Warriors, the rest of those guys, Wiggins, Clay, um, Draymond was getting buckets. <laughs> Uh, I think he had eight, all of his eight points in the first half. Eight points in the first. Yeah. Yeah. Most of them even in the first quarter, I think. Um, yeah. Well, you know, he reacted to his mom's tweet. Like when your mom <laughs> tells you you suck, you you get, you get, either you get, um, you know, you you react to it and, you, and you, you know, you get all depressive and stuff, um, uh, which maybe he did, but he just went out and talked about it in his podcast and, and then he performed. So, Hey, he wanted to make his mama proud, right? So good for him. So, yeah, yeah. yeah no, but and, and he was defending really well. I, I read a stat that the Celtics um, scored one in uh, one in 10 shots that Draymond contested. So wow. he was playing his defense. Mm. Like that, that's that, that's what he does, right? So one in 10, mm. that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I was going to say, this is what's scary for the Celtics, though. They, they've still lost the game with Curry shooting poorly and being yes. kind of non-influential on the game, right? Yes. Um, and Clay being average, but yeah. Draymond should playing well and Wiggins playing extremely well. So it's it's kind mm. of worrying to me that that's why I was saying, you know, Warriors in six. And now I'm even more confident there's gonna be Warriors in six. But wow. Because we're gonna we'll we'll get Clay game six Clay coming up <laughs> plus Steph Curry the revenge. So it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. And, P- and Poole wasn't a factor either, this game. And Poole, yeah. You had Gary Payton scoring f- 14, f- 15, 15 points. 14, you know? yeah. yeah. So Ga- really for good. Gary Payton to score 15, that means he needs to step up. And Poole, yeah. Poole wasn't a factor and Curry wasn't a factor. So these guys come come out, come back and, and have it, you know, whatever three-pointers game and that's it. Game over, right? Yeah. Yeah, especially yeah. when they put it What was the average for, for game five? They, they shot like 20% from three or something like that? It's like some, is, that some, the, is that the Warriors? The, the Warriors, yeah. Yeah, it was nine for 40, 22.5%. Oh, oh God. Wow. And they still, and they still yeah. won the game. That's that's what I'm saying. Comfortably. Like, comfortably. And it's like it's so this it's, is a missed opportunity for the Celtics, man. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was it was theirs to, to to come and grab, you know. It's like it's uh, I still think when I saw the, the highlights again and I saw them creeping back into the game and taking um you know, taking over in the th- was in the third or in the fourth quarter that suddenly they were like a bite to rule. Can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, so the the Celtics, Celtics was, yeah. the Celtics took over in the third quarter. And I was like, oh god, this is one of those games that it's gonna be like, you know, when it does run away, suddenly like the other team come by a shot and like suddenly you're up by 10, 15, 16, and you're like uh, that's what I thought we'll, we'll be seeing. But then no, somehow, even though the the, the two of the, the, the star the two players that are supposed to be your your offensive firepower, they're just not happening and they you still lost that games. To me, it's like it, it tells a lot, you know, uh, mm. about what's happened there. It's it's more I'm not saying the war the Warriors should have not won that game. I was just saying the Celtics maybe with the turnovers and with um yeah the that like being super tired. I don't know, it's it's yeah, it's just shocking to me that, shocking. Yeah. that but but the, the Warriors have 50 points in the paint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they did so, they did they overscore them by 16, right? So what do you yeah, so so yeah, 14. So what 14. why you're the Celtics and these guys are not having a good three point game and you're still defending the three pointer as in like these guys these mm-hmm. guys are killing so, so you forget about the paint, so what's happening? It's it's a tricky situation with that yeah. though, isn't it? Because you also you don't want to be like, oh, they're missing tonight, and then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just start yeah, giving up open jumpers, right? Play, yeah, 
Um, you can't the invite them to, of, to shoot threes, right? Yeah. Exactly. The one part of um, Wiggins' game that wasn't on was his three-point shot. Uh, I think it was 0 for 6. And I thought they were smart for giving him the looks that they gave him. Like, if he was the one shooting it, when they were scrambling on defense, they would just sort of be like, okay, well, but, if he makes it, he makes it type of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, you still, I think you still guard Steph Curry like he's Steph Curry, and you still guard Clay Thompson sure. like he's Clay Thompson. But did you see? Sure. Did you see how? Did you see the, the the Wiggins highlights though? The way he played and how smart he was about it. Mm. Because he, every single shot he took was like a mid range, um, yeah. shooting over. Was it White defending on him? Small, yeah, smaller defenders. Yeah, and White, White, like it was like who was it? There's a video I watched on YouTube earlier on. It's the guy was like it was just like sh- shooting over a, a chair, basically. Mm. That's just how it was. Like even though White can move and can play decent defense, yeah. like he was just like turn like j- mid range turnaround jumpers. He was just like the guy was just there, and Wiggins was. Yeah, you know, but he has a lot of elevation on his jump shot. Yeah, um, and then and he was he, aggressive to to the basket and attacking the basket as well a lot. Yeah, uh, threw down a, a really nice dunk in the fourth, mm. um, and that's that's what I mean about it's obviously a more extreme case, but that's kind of what I mean about the the Tatum thing. Wiggins um, being the number one overall pick, trying to carry a Timberwolves franchise, it's just like. He was completely miscast in that role. Yeah. But as a third or fourth option, all of a sudden you have a player who, if he really needs to, can create a shot for himself. Um, but ultimately is just gonna cut hard, get on the re- get on the glass, um, and can just do the little things on offense that allow yeah. him to score um to where he can have a night like last night, um yeah. despite taking so few like he ended up taking 23 shots but it wasn't like he was like he ended up taking the most shots on the Warriors but it was more just out of opportunity rather than forcing Mm. anything yeah and when you're further down the pecking order those opportunities get created for you by the players that take the most shots in general so I, I think um that he's just perfect in this role He's perfect in this role. Nothing to add on that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's all you need, right? You need to find where to fit in. You might be a great player, but it just if the system's not set up to help you shine, so like mm-hmm. a better description, um, yeah, you mm-hmm. might, you will get lost in, into that system. So I'm, mm-hmm. glad, I'm glad he's finally proven that he wasn't a, a bust as a number one, right? Because there's a lot of chat around that not being the biggest but that's number one but at least being a very big disappointment i think yeah, yeah. you know the he just had to find his his team and his style so yeah, yeah, it'll I'm be interesting to look it'll be interesting to look back at that draft and see where he would rank as far as as good as how he is compared to the others in that draft because uh, i think jabari parker was taken second after him yes and he's damn near out of the league, right? Um, and then obviously Embiid at three was the, the cream of the crop, but he only dropped because of the injury. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'd be interesting to take a look through the rest of those those players. So the tw- 2014? Already, yeah, 2014. Jesus. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, you're off to Kai. Um, and then oh, we haven't right. mentioned him much. Um, Jalen Brown. Uh, yeah. He had the real stinker. I think this was comfortably his worst game. Um, And again, I don't know if it's fatigue. He played 44 minutes and had played 40 plus the last uh, couple as well. Um, But uh, yeah, turning the ball over like crazy. Couldn't make a three-point shot. Could barely make a two-point shot. Um, Got to the line a little bit. Uh, But yeah, I think his play was kind of indicative of the Celtics play overall. Um, and yeah, they're gonna need they're gonna need him to get back to his close to his best um, to to avoid elimination. But you look at the stats and it's like, yeah, he had a good game. But then when you watch actually watch what he's done, it's not. They just, no, I'm not gonna say it's padding stats, but it's just like they were not amounting to much. <laughs> it was just like. 
Yeah, I mean, empty, but empty I, stats. But I think the like the his field goal percentage was very telling. Like that tells the story of the game. Sure. You look at Tatum's game, and it looks like he was actually efficient. When when you watch the game, it didn't feel like like you said three air balls. Mm. If <laughs> there's no way to show how bad some of the misses were for for him, um, and also the stat sheet doesn't tell you when those misses came. So uh, I think Tatum's stat line is a bit more deceptive. Um, granted, they both scored what they scored, uh, but in terms of field goal percentage and everything like that, Jalen Brown just shows that there was no way you can um, mm. clean that up. It looked True. bad. True. Yeah. And it was bad. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess that brings us to prediction time. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> is it over is it over that is the big question um we potentially have two more games um but do we need two more games um that's- well that's the thing that's what you were saying well i was always saying that they're so incons- inconsistent that we don't know like they might blow the the Celtics might blow the warriors by 35 in the next game and then go to game seven. <laughs> so we don't actually know what we're getting into from, from you know, from the from the Celtics. Uh, I've heard a, a very interesting conspiracy conspiracy theory this morning about how um, Adam Silver wasn't at game five because he had a health protocol. Well, we don't know. Apparently, he's got COVID, but we don't know if he has COVID, yeah. or we don't know if he's uh, a case contact case thing. You know. Um, close so <laughs> close contact, whatever. So they're saying now, if he's not back for game six, if they know then he's not coming back for game six to hand the trophy, they might extend it to game seven. You know, they <laughs> and uh, if he's back for the game seven, or if, if, he, if he's not back for game seven, the guy who's in charge of to game handing, hand, no, the guy who's in charge of handing the trophy is called. Do you not know how he's called? Mm-hmm. Mark Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Celtics, Celtics in seven. Mark Tatum <laughs> handing the trophy to, <laughs> to chase the tent. Ah, come on. Hey. Oh my gosh. That is the most Reddit thing I've ever heard in my life. It's the most. No, I, I heard it. I was like, okay, some people are like <laughs> stretching it to the max. Um, <laughs> no, uh, to, to me, my prediction is Warriors and six. I'll stick to my original wow. prediction. That was your original prediction. I'm Damn, sticking to that. Killing it. Ah, this year. Yeah. <laughs> At me on Friday morning. <laughs> yeah, no. I think I think the Celtics are going to take this one. They're going back to Boston. Uh, they, 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 they're taking game six, sorry. Not, not the mm-hmm. whole championship. But I'm sticking to my prediction, which was Warriors in seven. Mm. Mm. oh it's tough um have they got i mean they definitely have it in them to win in the game there's no doubt about that um it's just again a question of have they sort of have they run out of gas right have they got Mm. the the fight in them to to win one more um and force that game seven because the thing is for me I, i picked the warriors in seven uh, and I guess it had to happen this way if it was going to happen this way. Because sure. um, if, if the Warriors had gone up 3-1 on the other hand or whatever, um, or if the Celtics had gone up 3-1, it probably ends before 7. But I don't know. I feel like the Warriors have just looked a lot better than the Celtics the last few games. Um, and, I, and I can't I can't see the Celtics like winning in a blowout in the next game. I could definitely be wrong. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't see the series as being that close. Um, but I also think even if the Celtics win the next game in a close one, that puts a lot more pressure than you'd think on the Warriors to win in seven. Sure. Like, game seven in the finals at home is a real, real um, pressure cooker. Yeah, and I mean, if anyone can handle it, it's them. 
um, I probably have less faith in Boston winning in seven on their home floor than I would the Warriors winning seven on their home floor. But it, it does become a toss up, right? Mm. You go on a cold streak and that's it. <laughs> that could be it for the game. Um, so I think my, my heart wants, <laughs> wants Warriors in six just, just for, for the sake of nerves. Um, <laughs> and that's what I'm going to say, even though, even though the Celtics could absolutely win the next game and, and force a seventh. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's not so much a prediction, more of a a wish. Blow out the candles. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we're we saying, we say we both say Warriors and six, and Jose saying Warriors and seven. Seven, correct. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So we all okay. Celtics fans are gonna clip this. Yeah, yeah. This well, is why their podcast is coming to a close because it's ass, and they always just pick Warriors and pick against the Celtics. <laughs> Boston and seven. Yeah, hopefully keep that, please. <laughs> Be amazing. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. Yep. Then I'm going to anything else. I'm good. I think I'm done here. <laughs> All right. It's gonna be fun. Gonna be interesting. Let's let's wrap things up there. Uh, so. As I said, get us on social media at Grit and Grind Pod. Uh, like, share, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast so that we can have good ratings for the rest of our days. Um, <laughs> I have been your host, David Sago. He has been Thomas Arnold. Goodbye. And he has been Jose Garcia Vidal. Bye bye. And we're out of here. <laughs>